Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at another way to install Arch. And I've been looking at all of these different Arch installers. And uh, I think a lot of the reason here is Arch is a good system, oftentimes has a reputation of being difficult to install, but now a lot of new installers are coming out to make it easy. Now there's a little bit of split in the community. Some people just don't like people running easy to install scripts and things. Uh, some people are like, like me, I don't focus as much on learning how to install Arch by individual command lines as much as I focus on learning how to use Linux to get my real work done. And so we have a di kind of distinction here. So Arch Script is another, an another Arch installer that will allow us to install Arch kind of the pure way, but with a very guided method. And of all of the installers, we've looked at Arco Linux, we've looked at Arch Labs, I've looked at Manjaro Architect. Up to this point in time, I think Manjaro Architect was the most difficult. Um, yeah, now that ArchFi, ArchFi is actually the one that gave me the most problems overall. And so let's go ahead and have a look at it and uh, what we need to do here. So uh, the ArchFi script is over at GitHub and the script is, it's just like it sounds. It's going to be a script that will walk you through each of the steps. I did find if you deviate from any defaults, it tends to fail. <laughs> so uh, for whatever that is worth. So let's go ahead and uh, walk through how to use it first. So you're going to use this wget uh, archfi-sf.net uh, slash archfi. And, uh, and then you're going to launch it by just sh archfi, and then it's going to load. Now there's another one, I think it's archdie, uh, which does the desktop environments. Maybe it's archdie. That is actually in this script, so you don't have to run that as a separate script. That's going to get you your desktop environments. So what you're going to have to do to get this guy running is you're going to start out with a virtual machine running on Arch. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to roll on over to our um, uh, to our uh, virtual machine here and uh, we're just going to boot Arch and you're just going to boot this guy up. This is just the, the simple download for the Arch system and uh, then what we're going to do is just run through the script. So as soon as this guy gets loaded up and we land on a on a prompt, then we are going to start with the uh, wget, and we should be away from there. So here we are, we are root on the arch installer, so we're just going to do the wget, and let's see, it is wget archfi.sf.net slash archfi, let me double check, make sure I typed correctly. That looks correct. It's going to get everything all set up for us. There we are. And now we just need to sh archfi. All right, so now we are basically, for all intents and purposes, inside the installer. And so now we're just going to start out with looking at our language. And uh, we just want to make sure that you grab whatever language you would like. So we are going to do English set the keyboard layout, and I want a US English. So it's gonna load up uh, US English, say yes. Now we're going to do disk partitions, so we can do auto or we can manually configure it. So here I have a 40 gig disk inside of here, and are we going to partition this automatically? It's gonna run the automatic partitioner. So we're going to type in yes to configure it automatically. So now it's actually going to create for us four partitions. So let's go ahead and examine this. So if I'm going to look at, I think if I look at edit the partitions, it's going to show us what we have. All right, so we have an SDA1, which is a BIOS boot. We have an SDA2, is a Linux file system that is 512 megabytes. We have SDA3 is a Linux swap, and we have an SDA4 is our Linux file system. So we have to remember what those orders are. Let's go ahead and quit. 
So, um, and let's go ahead and go back. Now we have to select partitions and install. So now we want select your boot devices. This is where we had to remember where those are and they are a little bit different than I might do them if I were manually going, but it's automatically installing them. So if you like go, oh, let's just change this to something else, I'm finding that the system fails. Now our swap, remember is SDA3 and our root, the root is where the file system is, is on SDA4. So go ahead and keep all of those exactly the same. Home partition, if you had a separate partition for home, you would select it here. In this case, it does not, so we are selecting none. All right, so you can see the summary. SDA2 was boot, uh, and that's exactly what we had. Swap is three, root is four, home is nothing, so that means that it's going to put our home inside of our root. So that is good. Are we going to format devices? Yes, we are indeed going to format them. And yes, wiping everything out. Select the, the uh, partition for SDA2. This is for the boot. Uh, this one is the one I usually would do FAT32. It defaults to EXT2. I'm going to change this one to FAT32. Okay, for the swap and for the root, I want ext4 you can pick any of the variety ones if you wanted to do an encrypted here you would do the encrypted i do not because it's on a virtual machine so we're going to go with ext4 let's go ahead and yes we are going to do that and it is going to be done and now we're going to mount so everything is now mounted all right so now we are going to install arch linux so here we're going to pick our kernel where they're going to do this is the rolling this is the lts and then we have a hardened and a zen um let's just try the regular let's see you know what i'm going to go with the lts just to be safe if this were like production or something i might actually go with the linux rolling um i'm going to do the lts because i'm i know this is going to be safe i can't remember what i did on my test install but i think that might have been it so linux firmware say yes now it's going to be synchronizing the packages and if i remember correctly i think this is the step where it's going to synchronize all of your packages and then it's going to start the install so we're going to go ahead and pause the video here this part here might be the step that takes us about 20 or 30 minutes it's going to be a lot longer than it is to do anything else. So we'll go ahead and cut out the video here. And when we have another step, I will come on back and we will proceed further. Okay, so that step ended and uh, that took, I'd say that might have taken about 30 or so minutes. So uh, 30 or so minutes later for that, we're going to go ahead and press any key and see what our next step happens to be. All right, so now we need to configure Arch Linux. So we've gone ahead and set it. So set the computer host name, Arch Linux. Looks good to me. Okay, set the keyboard layout. We've already done this before, but we're going to be good. Locality, this is one we need to do. So let's find US. Let's see. Hmm. Got to remember which one this is. We'll find it. There it is. E-N-U-S. There we go. Okay. Set the time. Go to America. New York. And set hardware clock. Good. Okay. So now we can set a root password. Let's enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. All right, generate an f-stab. And then the bootloader. So we're going to use uh, grub. We can do grub or syslinux. We're going to install grub. Let's see, install grub and edit grub, install bootloader. Let's just go ahead and do grub. So this will not take a long time. Once it gets downloaded here in a couple seconds, then we will be set to go. Okay, so it's done with the install. So let's go ahead and uh, press any key once again to continue. It should go ahead and create the file. You can see here it's finding the Linux images. So it's adding things to the grub menu. So we don't need to do any OS probing. It's already there. See install bootloader grub install. 
Go ahead and get that going. There you go. Now we are done. Now let's go back to the previous screen. Uh, we can enable uh, DHCP. Yes, we're going to enable that. Some networking stuff. And then now this is that step that I said. This is another one, Arch Die. This is a full desktop install script. So this is a separate script. If we stop here, then you can boot into Arch, but there's no desktop environment. So we are going to go ahead and run the next script, which is Arch Die. And now we're going to run through the installation of a setup. All right. So, uh, so Arch Linux desktop install as two dependencies, wget. So do you want to set these up? Yes. Let's go ahead and get those guys set up. And then it's going to go ahead and prompt us as to the next phase, which is going to get us our desktop environments and I believe our applications as well. Okay. So here we have our uh, starting menu here on Arch Die. So first we have updates. So we can install Pac-Man contributors. We can install Yay, Trizen, Orman, Yaourt, which is end of life. Or we can do a system upgrade. Everything should be upgraded already. We can edit Pac-Man configuration, mirror lists, all these types of things that we have as an option. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install Yay. Uh, because I think that that's going to give us a um, the ability to install Pomac uh, later. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then uh, we're going to come back for the next phase of the installation. All right, so that finished and we are back to here. And uh, so what we're going to do from here is, let's just double check and see if there's anything else I want to install. We can upgrade with yay now we can just do our basic updates but we're going to go back now we're going to look at install so console are going to be your basic applications for your terminal so pretty much these right now we're just going to go with some some defaults so uh just nano vim we're going to leave off vi uh pacman contrib Base Dell. These are all the various tools that you'll have for inside of your terminal. So we're going to basically do the same thing with each of these. I'm just going to go back for now. I'm going to go through and, and add all these guys in. Uh, we're just going to do it all in one step so I don't have to start, stop, start, stop the video. So network tools. Uh, pretty much most of these I'm not really going to change anything from the defaults. Um, I'm not going to bother with a terminal browser. I'm not going to bother with anything in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you're going to have to do them in stepwise. So it does take a little bit of extra time. So I'm going to say, OK, it's going to get back down to here. And we're going to have to do this for each of these steps. So I'm going to stop the video and come back when we are done installing all of these. OK, so we've been through all of those. So we're just going to go ahead and go back. Now we're going to go into the system here and we're going to run through all these. I think we're using the LTS kernel. So LTS, um, Linux LTS, Linux LTS headers. So it's just going to install a little bit more. I think we should already have most of this here, but uh, this is going to be anything else that we might need for uh, desktop environments, other things like that. And uh, we'll come back when this guy is done installing. All right, so we'll go ahead and go through that. And let's see, we don't need any there. So let's go ahead and have a look at the rest of these items here. So these are basic system services. Um, I'm really going to install Samba as well. File system items. So in case we want to do anything else, so OS probers for multiple OSs. I think the system does that automatically, but we'll go ahead and do that anyway, just in case. Uh, here's an SSH client in case you need any of these guys here. Uh, again, like I said, we're going to go back through. You have to do each one of these screens individually. I'm just going to show you what they all are. So this guy here, if you happen to need these. Now, Gutenberg is if is the uh, open source print drivers. My printer does not work with Gutenberg print drivers, uh, so I'm not going to install it. If you do know that your printer does support Gutenberg, you might want to go ahead and just install them there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. We already did the kernel. We're going to go ahead and do the services. And then once again, I'm going to stop the video after I've walked through this screen, all of these uh, installation steps here.
Okay, so all of those are enabled. Now, and I enabled, when you get into the services, there's several things to enable or disable. Uh, this will also enable the, the key locks, like the, the number lock on, on boot up, enables the cron services, SSH services, things like that. Of course, the print enables the cups services for printing. Um, all right, so we have uh, the X screen. So of course, this is gonna be just like the other ones. The first button here will give you information about your uh, GPU. So in case you need that to be searching for whatever you need to be searching for in here, you can always pull this screen up and see what is there. Um, the install here, here's the variety of things that you need. And uh, just make sure that you are installing whatever uh, items. Again, if you just use the defaults on this, then generally that's okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and have a look at the default fonts here. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a warning. Don't skimp on your fonts. If you skimp on your fonts, you may not get a font installed that the system actually needs. And if that happens to occur, then you will end up with a system that will boot, but everything will look like square boxes. And so whatever our defaults happen to be, um, you want to go ahead and set those. There's nothing here. Now, you might want to do like the Ubuntu font family, maybe uh, MS Free font family if you want to. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. Here's uh, input div uh, drivers here. You can choose what you want to install for input drivers. Uh, this is, you know, things like your mouse, touch pads, things like that. Um, and there's Wacom tablets there, a bunch of other things, and your video drivers. You have open source or proprietary options. This one here, you do kind of know, need to know a little bit about what you have. Um, I know in this I'm running, um, I'm running AMD, so I can, can just use the AMD graphics cards. So, uh, once again, I'm going to go through this screen and install pretty much just my defaults. Uh, if you want to install anything else, go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll be back when we're done with this install screen. Okay, so everything in there was very self-explanatory to get installed, just as we said. All right, so next we're gonna do um, desktop environment, and then your desktop environment is probably going to bring a display manager with it. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, in every case that I've tested this, it does bring the display manager. Uh, just be aware of that. And then let's go ahead and have a look at our desktop environments. So we have Plasma, XFCE, GNOME, Cinnamon, LXDE, LXDE, uh, GDK3, LXQT, Mate, Enlightenment, OpenBox, and Deepin as options. Uh, let's go ahead and try out the LXDE GTK. Let's go ahead and do that because uh, why not, you know? Uh, so here it's uh, asking you to install a bunch of other things. So we'll have OpenBox with this. So uh, for those that want a uh, window manager, basic window manager, you can go ahead and do that. And uh, again, just click, click through your yes. It's going to download and install everything. And uh, once we get that uh, done, then we'll be back uh, for the final wrap up here. Okay, so we got to the end of the uh, desktop environment install. And you can see here that we have LXDM service enable at boot. Uh, this is actually the step that uh, Arch um, was it Arco Linux D does not actually do. Um, so very simple, but uh, it asks us here: Do you want to enable your LXDM? So this is your light man, your light window manager. Uh, well, not light window. Um, it's one of your um, display managers. So you can see GDM, LXDM, uh, light DM. Uh, so it already enabled this. So we don't have anything to do on this step. Uh, if we go ahead and try it again, it's just going to tell us we have some conflicts or something else. And of course, our last one is the uh, office applications and things. So uh, we're not going to go through these. But what I do actually want to point out, uh, when you go under your office suites, you can go with the uh, the more rolling or the more LTS type LibreOffice. We also have the language tool grammar checker, which is this is the only distribution I know of that will give you the option to install this out of the box. Uh, I'm sure there's probably other ones, but that is a language, uh, a grammar checker that will enable you to uh, have the grammar checks on LibreOffice. Uh, there's some other tools there. Uh, as far as internet, uh, we do probably want a web browser, so let's go ahead and install Firefox. Uh, you can see you have a variety, large variety of different, um, uh, different web browsers to choose from. Uh, let's see if there's anything else we might want. So Thunderbird, Evolution, and then there's some other tools for Evolution there. 
multimedia. We have GStreamer, audio player. So, of course, GStreamer, if you are going to be doing multimedia, you probably want to install that. Here's your various burner tools, depending on which one you want, video tools. So again, just select the ones that you want. In my case here, because we're just gonna just do a kind of a lightweight system, uh, I'm pretty much gonna install uh, Firefox. I'm gonna look through the rest of these to see what if there's anything else I really want. Um, but for the most part, these are all gonna be very easy to install later. Here's basic system tools. So out of the box, we shouldn't even really get system tools. You know, you, if you are doing you know wine stuff, you can go ahead and do your wine with G parted, bleach bit, keypass XC, virtual box, things like that. And Pac-Man, we can do um, the Pamak AUR. So I'm actually probably gonna do, um, I'm just gonna do uh, Firefox. Uh, so let's go ahead and do Firefox and we're going to do uh, Pomac. Those are the only ones I'm going to install uh, out of all this. And then uh, we'll come back on when we are done with that. Okay, so the software is installed. Again, we just did uh, Firefox and uh, Pomac is what we did. And so let's go ahead and back up. And let's see which updates, install, config. So if we want to configure anything here, I think we should actually be good on all of these. Actually, no, we're not. Um, I know at least we need to do accounts. We need to do accounts here. So let's just go ahead and do Arch as a user. Enter my super secret password that is definitely not 123. And then we're going to go and add sudoers. And this is the ability to use sudo. So we're going to go ahead and add our uh, Arch user to that list. So if we want to enable a firewall, here's uh, system D. You can enable um, uh, system D services if you want. Uh, so, if, you know, like there's for the print servers, cups, things like that. Uh, we're just going to leave everything here as it is for now. See if there's anything here. I think everything, pretty much everything on these should be set up. Uh, I think we should all be good. Let's go ahead and back up out of there. So I think we're actually pretty good. So let's back up out of ArchFi. Going to unmount. Let's go back and reboot. And when we reboot, hopefully we should reboot into an operating system that functions. Now the first option, of course, is gonna boot up our Arch installer. We wanna boot off existing, um, existing uh, OS now. So hopefully we will get booted into an LXDE build. And when we do that, then hopefully we should be able to use it and uh, see what we have. So here we are. We are booted in here. Uh, we have a couple of options, KDE Openbox, Openbox LXDE, and default. So let's go ahead and pick our arch, enter my super secret password that's definitely not one, two, three. And uh, let's see, you know what? I'm wondering if we actually installed a terminal. I'm not sure if we did. That would suck if we didn't do one, but you know what? I did install Pomac. So if I didn't install a terminal, let's go ahead and install Pomac. Uh, let's see, manage that, preferences, add remove software. Yeah, it looks like I did not install a terminal. Um, let's just find a terminal application to install. I don't really care which one. Good thing we put Pomac in there, right? <laughs> Whoops. Let's go ahead and do that and get that guy loaded up. And then we'll go ahead and I want to see if we can get this guy full screen here or not without having to fight with it too badly. And if we have to fight with it, that's okay. We've managed our task of getting, uh, getting this guy down. So let's go ahead and do that. Should be hooking everything over. Hey, look at that. Now we should have a, a terminal here somewhere. This depends on where it went. Oh, we did have a terminal. I just didn't see it. All right. Uh, let's do X -ran R. Let's see if we have. Hey, we do. Look at that. We do have a full screen capability. All right. So uh, there we are. We got a uh, we got an Arch system running with the ArchFi script. 
Um, so with that, what, let's go ahead and talk about the Arch 5 script here. I actually had to do this a couple of times to get everything working. So of all of your Arch installer scripts, this is definitely going to be easier than doing Arch just manually by hand, but it's definitely going to be the hardest of all of the scripts that we've run. So of course we've looked at Arch Labs, which gets us landing on the desktop better, but then we have to manually go in and configure packages. That's kind of a pain. Or we had the Arco Linux where we get everything set up, but we have to manually enable the window manager or it's like whatever, the login screens. Um, and so none of these is, are perfect. Uh, Manjaro Architect was more complicated, but gave us the absolute, without a doubt, most polished system once everything was set up. Um, this one here, this one here is actually, if you want the, probably the purest of all of the arches, I think Arco Linux though does get us a pretty pure arch as well. This one might be the way to go because it really is pure arch just running, you know, walking you hand by hand through a script. Although it is a little bit complicated at times. If you do anything outside of the defaults, you better really know what you're doing. And uh, overall, I find that it's a little bit more difficult. Now, one of the challenges is that it does, since you have to go back and forth to all the menus over and over and over, it takes a lot more time to get everything set up on this. So I actually started this at about 5 p.m., I think. It is now 10.30. That's how long it takes to do this. Versus Linux Mint, hey, 15 minutes, spin it up, we're done. Uh, even Arch Labs, Arco Linux, um, Manjaro Architect take a significant less time commitment. So this does take a long time. So don't use the Arch 5 script if you're in a hurry and you just need to get a Linux distribution spun up. Not a good for that. Uh, but if you do want to completely thoroughly and fully customize your system running Arch, I would highly recommend the script. So those are kind of my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on this uh, on this script in the comments down below.